welcome back to the another project presentation today the presentation is stock market index replication using auto encoders i'm handing this presentation to shalini uh, thank you gompi uh, hi everyone uh, my name is shalini i and my team are here to present a project on stock market index replication using auto encoders before i proceed further i would like to thanks inodata tix director bharni kumar depur sir sharat mani konda sir and also i would like to thanks to the project mentor uh, sandhya kupala ma'am and raju ji sir now i would like to introduce my team members uh, vibhuti shivangi rajkumar tulsi vinita varun varamalli akhil विघ्नेश श्रीकांत चंद्रशेखर विजयलक्ष्मी सो दीज आर द मेम्बर्स हू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड टू मेक दिस प्रोजेक्ट सक्सेसफुली सो नाउ आई वुड लाइक यू टू टेक टू द बेसिक इंट्रोडक्शन टू अवर प्रोजेक्ट सो टू प्रिडिक्ट टू द स्टॉक प्राइस ऑफ अ मलेशियन स्टॉक ट्रेडिंग इंडेक्स एफ पी एम के एल सी आई एंड प्रोवाइड अ ओवर व्यू फॉर द टूल इम्प्लीमेंटेशन this involves extracting the stock and index data of a malaysian stock trading index that is fbm klci from yahoo finance and building a machine learning model using auto encoders such extractions can help investor to make a better investment decisions and stock price prediction using a machine learning helps to discover the future values of a company stock and other financial assets that are traded on exchange that is that we trade on stock market the entire idea of predicting the stock price is to gain the significant profits so this is just a small introduction about our project that what we did next is the goal of our project that is objective of our project is to maximize the returns on investment and provide a actionable report that can help in making a good investment decisions also maximize the index replication and some of the constraints that we faced while working with uh, our uh, data set and working on our project that is reconstruction loss stock with the higher price have a larger impact on the movements in the index as compared to lower price stocks so these was the contents uh, constraints that we faced while working with our project so let's move to the next slide that is a crisp mlq methodology so crisp mlq methodology have six have six stages so let's move to the first stage the first stage is a business and the data understanding so here we understand the business problem and also we understand the data that what type of data and how like on what type of data we will be working so next step is a data engineering as i said next step is a data engineering here we uh, we can say it as we prepare or we process our data for model building so we perform a such steps like data selection data cleaning feature engineering and data standardization and few more steps are also there next is the Uh, next is the model building stage here whatever we uh, done with uh, here whatever we do after data pre processing the data will be passed to the model so here we used a uh, auto encoders to build our model and the fourth stage of the crisp mlq methodology is model testing and model evaluation in this stage we check the performance of the model on the test data and evaluate its accuracy so this is the very important stage we can say it as to test our model if we if we need any fine tuning we do here itself in the model testing and if our model is uh, if overfitting or if it is underfitting we perform some necessary changes and necessary uh, decisions we take in the model testing and model evaluation next comes to the deployment part this is the fifth stage that i can say this denotes the process of machine learning integration into existing software system 
in case our model is not able to give the expected output we again move to the first stage and we do the all processing steps again if our model is giving the expected output then we move to the last stage that we call it as a monitoring and maintenance so monitoring and maintenance stage is the last stage uh, this this we can do if model is required any necessary changes or any upgradation in future when the model get deployed at the client side so this we can do it in the monitoring and maintenance now move to the next slide that is the technological stacks so going further here we have used some of the technological stacks that i can say python we have used here to build our model like python programming language we have used here and for coding as a ide ide we have used here colab and spider and to store the data we have used sql along with that to do some data manipulation visualization and some framing that we used like a pandas matplotlib scikit-learn and for visualization we have used a matplotlib library so that's all about uh, from my side so further i would like to hand over to shivangi to explain uh, about our project thanks shalini moving on to the system requirements to build and run the model effectively and efficiently we need a system with some primary requirements like ram 8 gb intel i5 processor and windows 10 operating system we then need to install and configure the system with the following applications and libraries python version 3.8 python provides a great python provides great libraries to deal with data science applications python is a programming language and one of the main reasons why python is widely used in scientific and research communities is because of its ease of use and simple syntax we then install anaconda which is a python distribution and is commonly used for data science the anaconda distribution includes the anaconda navigator which is a graphical user interface tool that makes it easy to configure install and launch ides such as jupyter and spider we also need a few more libraries like pandas pandas stands for python data analysis library pandas is a fast powerful flexible and easy to use open source data analysis and data manipulation tool it is built on top of python programming language so most of the data manipulation operations in this project are carried out using pandas numpy as the name indicates is a numerical python it is a library consisting of multi dimensional array objects and a collection of routines for processing these arrays numpy can be used to perform a wide variety of mathematical operations on arrays it adds powerful data structures to python that guarantee efficient calculations with arrays which is why it is one of the most important and most widely used libraries in data science data science is nothing without visualizations so we use matplotlib to accomplish this task matplotlib is a visualization library in python for 2d plots of arrays which is numerical extension of numpy next slide please yeah next coming to the project architecture or the data pipeline we begin with project we begin with the project objective which is to replicate the malaysian stock index and provide maximum return on investment after thoroughly understanding the data we collect the data by web scraping from yahoo finance this data consists of top 30 indexes that are listed in the malaysian stock index that is fbm klci this is our primary data and is stored in a csv file format we use pandas to access the data and further proceed to data preprocessing where we take care of data cleaning operations like outlier removal null values structural errors and removing unwanted observations we further deep dive into the data by performing exploratory data analysis next we visualize the data 
with data visualization tools like Matplotlib to get more insights on the data. After this, we begin model building using autoencoders, which is used for dimensionality reduction. We further evaluate the model using evaluation parameters like mean squared error, RMSE, MAE. Further, after evaluating the model, we deploy it using Flask, which is a deployment tool. After the model is deployed, we monitor the model so that the constraint of the project is taken care that when any stock is delisted from FBM KLCI, we rebuild the model and maximum returns on investment are given. Thank you. Uh, I would further ask my teammate Raj Kumar to continue with the further slides. Uh, thank you, Shivangi. Hi, guys. Good evening, everyone. I would like to take you through data preparation and data visualization slides. The first step of data preparation is data collection. The data is collected from a primary source, that is uh, Malaysian Stock Trading Index, FBM KLC, using yahoofinance.com. The data is extracted from Yahoo Finance using web scrapping technique. A web scrapping is a process of extracting useful information from a particular website and uh, storing the extracted uh, information in a database for further processing. The next step of uh, data preparation is data understanding. The data set contains 32 records and one column. These 32 records uh, indicate 32 indices of stock companies. The data set contains around 12 missing values. Uh, here is the attribute information. This data set contains one and only one attribute, which is symbol. The symbol column contains uh, the names of registered companies of Malaysian Stock Trading Index, FBM KLC. The next step of data preparation is data cleansing. As we know that uh, data cleansing is a process of identifying and replacing inconsistent, uh, incorrect information from database. The data cleaning ensures high quality of processed data and minimize the risk of wrong or inaccurate conclusions. All the NA values from symbol columns have been dropped. And uh, if there are any missing values, those values are also dropped from data set. Next slide, please. Here is a data visualization. As all we know that data visualization is defined as the graphical representation of data or information using various uh, visualization uh, elements like graphs and charts. That these data visualization helps us to understand how the trends, outliers, and underlying patterns in a data. After data collection and data pre-processing, these are the top 20 stocks in the index, which is having least mean squared error displayed on the left side of the presentation. The least value indicates companies with minimum reconstruction loss, thereby replicating the entire index. To the right of the top stock index, we can find data normalization. After normalizing the data, this representation gives a line graph overview of the normalized adjusted closing price of stock index in relation with days elapsed. And it is basically a time series plot. I further ask Varun Sani to carry the things forward. Thanks, Rajkumar. Now I will be explaining about the model building part. Basically, uh, next slide, please. Basically, we have used autoencoders for stock market replication. Autoencoders are a very special case of feed-forward neural network, which are generally used for dimensionality reduction and feature extraction. These are composed of an encoder and a decoder. The encoder takes the input and converts it into a latent state representation, which goes to decoder that outputs the value. We calculate the performance metric for different subselection of stock data based on weighted coefficient predicted by the model for each stock based on their importance to the stock index. In autoencoders, the hyperparameter Turing parameters are number of epochs, batch size, number of layers in encoder and decoder part, and number of nodes in encoder and decoder layer. 
we can create different types of auto encoder based on our requirement such as parse auto encoder stack auto encoder denouncing auto encoder and variational auto encoder next slide please coming to project model building pipeline firstly we are downloading the relevant data that is required for analysis thereafter we have further pre processes the data used for model building Following our model selection, we try to know the representative stocks for index tracking model with the help of weight allocated to each stock in the tracking portfolio. Our objective is to minimize the tracking error and other constraints. We have then sorted the constituents accordingly and selected the subset of constituents that satisfied our requirements. Next slide, please. Coming to project results by our analysis, these are two line plots that are indicating the application of an auto encoder to track the stock market index. This process has resulted in reducing the tracking cost. We have evaluated the, the tracking errors on project portfolios with same number of stock selected by different strategies. A smaller tracking error indicates better tracking performance of the stock selection strategy. Although increasing the number of stocks in the tracking portfolio will reduce the tracking error, it will not significantly improve the tracking performance, while it will create the additional transaction costs when the number of stocks included reaches a certain value. The correlation coefficient value here indicates the relationship between the track index and the FVM KLCI index. Now I would like Vijay Lakshmi to continue with the presentation. Thank you, Varun. Flask is a micro web framework. It is used to build web applications using Python. And Flask, uh, Flask is also called micro framework because it doesn't require any particular tools and libraries. So for, Flask began as a wrapper around as a WSGI protocol and Jinja template engine, but it ended up as one of the most popular Python web application framework. This is our, dip, next, next slide, please. Uh, this is our deployment video, and this is the home page. There is an dropdown here from where user can select the number of stocks user user wants to replicate and we have given to given to the options in the output page the stocks are deployed in table format with stock symbol and stocks name next slide please uh, when it comes to the conclusion uh, we have investigated the tracking performance of deep learning approaches, and we have used a variety of auto encoders like single hidden layer on under complete and sparse and contractive stack and denoising and various variational auto encoders. And they need to extract the complex nonlinear relationship between the stocks in a uh, stock market. And we have concluded the increasing the if the increase in the number of the stocks in the tracking portfolio, and it will reduce the tracking error. And we have also concluded that among the six autoencoder based strategies, the tracking error of the denoising autoencoder is the smallest. And the other five autoencoder based strategies, they also track better than the conventional strategies. And then auto, these conventional strategies, they perform, uh, uh, provided the only small number of stocks and they used in the tracking position. And the next slide, please. And the future scope when it comes to that, uh, stock price uh, prediction is an AI application and it has been a critical area of research and it is the, one of the top most uh, applications of machine learning. And uh, uh, the stock price prediction is using and it is used to discover the future value of company stock and other financial assets traded on an exchange. The next slide. Thank you. Thank you for giving it an opportunity. Thank you team. If you have any queries, can drop to the Q&A box in the YouTube live.
thank you shalini thank you vijaya um krishna could you please share your screen yeah. hi everyone my name is anjum today we are here to present the project which we have done on stock market index replication using auto encoders next slide please before we start i would like to thank bharani sir and sharad sir for all the guidance and sandhya kupala for mentoring us i would like to introduce my team members naman shinde krishna kashyap myself anjum nishant mathur nikhil maurya and ramya upala now i will start with the project introduction the market index system has evolved with the development of the securities market such as traditional investment and indexing investment traditional investment is based on the analysis of timing and stock fundamentals it is an actively managed strategy whereas indexing investment is passively managed by constructing a portfolio to track a market index investors are expected to obtain the same return and volatility as the target index with a relatively lower risk and management cost as well as better liquidity an index is a method to track the performance of a group of assets in a standardized way group of assets means the index contains a set of companies in this case fbm klci has 30 companies uh, and some other companies are like nasdaq which has 100 companies indexes typically measure the performance of a basket of securities intended to replicate a certain area of the market this could be a broad ba based index that captures the entire market stock price prediction using pre um, machine learning helps you discover the future value of company stock and other financial assets traded on an exchange the entire idea of predicting stock prices is to gain significant profits predicting how the stock market will perform is a hard task to do the idea behind an auto encoder is to reduce an original high dimensionality to a lower dimensionality which will reduce the time that goes into research and provides better accuracy the perform uh, the purpose of this project is to perform index replication and to predict stock prices of fbm klci stock index this includes web scraping of stock data from malaysian stock trading index fbm klci from yahoo finance and building an ml model using the auto encoders this helps investors for better portfolio management and helps in financial risk analysis next slide please okay. so the objectives of this project are fbm klci index replication minimize number of stock investments maximize profit generation and stock recommendation the main objective of this project um is with, uh, of uh, fbm klci index replication which is basically done to diversify the number of stock investments which in turn increases profit generation with this we would be able to provide stock recommendation to the investors the constraints of this project are fluctuations such as newly added stocks less number of observations to process reproducibility due to volatile market conditions while doing the project we came up with a constraint where a new company was listed in 2017 and existing old company was delisted as a result of which the data had lot of any values the number of observations were drastically getting reduced when we dropped na values as a part of data pre processing because of various fluctuations we can't reuse the model as it is we have to consider various market conditions verify data and rebuild the model accordingly now i would like to request nishant to continue further thank you everyone uh, thank you anjum uh, good evening everyone Uh, now let me start with crisp mlq uh, crisp mlq it's a project planning process which is designed for the development of machine learning applications as a first contribution crisp mlq covers a monitoring and maintenance phase to address risks of model degradation in a changing environment 
as a second contribution quality assurance methodology is introduced in each phase of process model giving a reasonable degree of confidence that the ml application acquires the expected quality throughout the development process next slide please now we shall discuss about the project architecture or data pipeline the first stage would be business and data understanding the initial phase is concerned with the task to define the business objectives and translate it to the ml objectives and the project objective being index application of stock market index of fbf klx index the next stage would be data collection and data preparation collecting data is not a static task but a rather an iterative task we did the web scraping from yahoo and the malaysian stock index the data collected for our project is primary source and its time series in nature which allows non stationary data distribution that is data changes over time data verification is done using data pre processing techniques such as a removal of null value removal of unwanted column information normalizing and treating outliers exploratory data analysis is carried out to gain insights on the underlying data the next stage would be model building for our project we have artificially fed forward neural network specifically auto encoders as it captures the non linear characteristic in data without prior knowledge the data is split as a test and train sample as an auto encoder model with encoder and decoder layers are built considering different hyperparameters the next stage would be the model evaluation the corrected model is evaluated using performance metrics such as a mean squared error accuracy on comparing the results obtained by our model we define success criteria the model is ready for deployment the next stage is model deployment dot The auto encoder model is deployed in web based application using flask application which showcases the business success criteria of index replication of FBM KLCI stock index. The next stage is monitoring and maintenance. In order to make data driven application and to take real time decision ML models are used over a long period and should be monitored throughout its life and cycle. Next slide please. So these are the, in order to carry out the project planning process, a decent workstation having a 8 or 16 GB of RAM, Windows or 7 Windows 7 pre-installed Python IDE along with a stable internet connection is required. These are the some of the technology stacks which are used in this project. Python, I, Python is namely a Google Colab and Spider. The main reason to implement Python language is because it is easy to interpret and provide great deals of libraries. flask application for web de deployment some of the libraries which are used are pandas used for data manipulation numpy for numerical calculation matplotlib for data visualization scikit-learn for machine learning models module tensorflow and keras for deep learning modules now i ask nikhil to continue with the presentation thank you everyone thank you nishant and thank you uh... for giving such a beautiful presentation now i am going to talk about data collection so basically what we have done in data collection uh first of all we have divided our code into two part in first part we are using a while loop where we are using a exception uh, a try and catch block where we use exception as uh, if uh, it's means if uh, the connection stops and if it uh, exceed more than 30 seconds then it have to um, change the connection show the connection error that we use in a catch exception block and uh in web where, where the website we have taken this data it is yahoo finance we have taken data of 30 top companies from the yahoo finance and it is from the klsi malaysia stock exchange well module is panda data reader index symbol as klsi 1 equals to 9 and stock symbol malaysia stocks and we have stored in a csv format stock data we have used uh, klsi stock again and that is also pickle format index data klsi index and dot pickle that is also used in a uh, pickle format Uh, we have uh, seen that uh, the collection data uh, collection of data is not a static but a rather it's an iterative uh, task cost and time are needed to collect the sufficient amount of consistent data by preparing and merging data from different sources and different format the data collected for our project data collected for our project is in a form of a primary source and in a time series in nature which follow, follows non stationary data distribution that is data uh, changes over time can you change the slide please yeah the stock symbol uh, we have you name uh, again malaysia stocks file size is 881 bytes file type common comma separated by values and uh, 
total number of columns are two total number of rows are 30 feature description symbols contain symbols of each stock present in, in KLSE index company names contain the name of each company corresponding to stock symbols for this what we have done that we have make a, a separate file and of a separate file and there we write or where we, we uh, take the take go to Yahoo site, copy all the thirty company name, paste it over there, and then we use it in uh, to gather all data of that those all thirty companies, and data extracted from Yahoo Finance stored in index data it is KLC index PKL format and stock data KLC stock PK dot PKL format. Why you have you separated these two data because sometimes it's happened that you need to means at the time of processing you don't have the uh, an internet connection and you want to recover want to work on those data so what we have done we have separated these two data once we had data get loaded in a stock data format then we can only we can work on that pre-stored data that's why we have separated both both the files so both the files contain the adjusted closing price the data is in a time series in nature as i already told so depending on data of my data and machine learning task verification journey using data pre-processing techniques as such as removal of null values remove unwanted column information normalizing and treating the outliers um, can you change the slide okay you can see all the analysis and building on the experience from the preceding data understanding and phase and data preparation service the purpose of producing data sets for the subsequent modeling phases and explore data analysis carried out to gain insight on underlining data please change the slide so data preparation as you can see that a data used for trading model is genuine and best known to our knowledge collected as it's we it's a, taken from highly reliable set at yahoo finance and we can trust on this site and stuff for data preparation removing non volume as i already told you removing unnecessary columns splitting data into train and test and normalizing data please change the slide and now i will uh, want krishna to take over from here and thank you for listening please krishna go on Hello everyone. As we know, our objective of our project is to replicate the stock market index of FBM KLCI stock index. For this specific purpose, the artificial neural network models have been proven to be very useful in making decisions regarding many financial activities such as portfolio management, bankruptcy prediction, and financial risk analysis. There are many other statistical al algorithms which are like uh, statistical met methods, random forest, logistic regression, and forecasting. All these models require <clears throat> heavy workload, domain expertise, and are computationally intensive. As the size of the data increases, the training time increases, and the output becomes difficult to interpret. For this specific, uh, for this specific purpose, the artificial, uh, artificial neural network models are a suitable choice. Since high dimensionality results in poor generalization of machine learning models, an autoencoder, which is a backpropagating algorithm which approximates the output similar to the input, is a suitable case. In other words, the autoencoder is trying to learn an approximation to the input so that the output, which is a thought vector, it is similar to the input provided. Through experimentation, we found that the autoencoder model which we are using was overfitting because of the information bottleneck. So a special type of encoder called sparse autoencoder is implemented, which, is, which contains L1 regularization techniques uh, is incorporated in this project. A sparse autoencoder is a type of autoencoder whose training criteria involves a sparsity penalty. We construct the loss function by penalizing activation of hidden layers so that only few nodes in the network are activated when a sim sample is fed into the network. The model is basically built on path Python platform using Google Collab and Spider ID, as mentioned by my friend Nishant. The various library used like Pandas, NumPy, and Matplotlib and Scikit-Learn, TensorFlow, and Keras were also used. The flow of model building is as follows. Upon importing required libraries in the Python IDE, we extract the data, that is we scrape the data from KLSC stock index from suitable starting and ending date from Yahoo Finance using Pandas data reader module. The stock data and the index data scraped from the web are stored in separate pickle file for further inspection. Later, explore data analysis is carried out to obtain the statistical description and urine variate analysis is carried out to know the basic underlining structure of data. 
and next the data preprocessing uh, is carried out to remove any null values and other column information later the data is split into testing and training samples and the split data is normalized to make it scale free next the auto encoder is built upon by training hyperparameters namely number of epochs batch size input layer size and learning rate the encoder and decoder layer of auto encoders are built by considering relu and sigma activation functions along with l1 regularizer the learning rate is optimized by using adam optimizer and the loss function is calculated for each epoch the model is trained on the training data and the mean square error is calculated and the value of the predicted of uh, value predicted on both test and train data are displayed based on the reconstructed error the stocks are sorted and visualized using a using a bar plot on the right side corner of the uh, ppt you can see that there are the top 20 stocks which represents the least mean square error mean square error which are constructed from the auto encoder model the line graph is plotted to visualize the klc original index and the tracked index which is obtained from the auto encoder are plotted as we can see and observe from the graph the tracked index and the original klc klc index are in phase with each other because of the limited number of the uh, uh, data points we selected the error was found to be greater finally to identify the stock top 5 stocks from the sorted group correlation coefficient values are calculated for both predicted values and finally the model is saved in .h5 extension file for further use and it is ready for implementation i would like to ask mr naman to carry out with further slides thank you yeah thank you krishna good evening everyone uh, myself naman now i will take you through the deployment part so in deployment part basically tells us that our model is ready to use so what happen in deployment is that there is a server where we keep our model and from the front end we send a request to our model and on the basis of that request our model will give us some response so for the deployment task uh, we i have we have used flask flask is a web framework which is used to create the web application in python it, it is easy to use and there are many uh, support community of developer to uh, help us if we get any problem uh, next slide yeah so when we deploy the flask here, this is the first screen which we will see so what happen in deployment is our model get loaded with the data set and it will compile compile the data set and create a small portfolio of the original index now from here we are going to choose the number of stocks which we go which we want to see and and when we hit the continue button uh, we will redirect to the new page that is this uh, where we will see the uh, name of those stocks which has the least error uh, next slide now i will take you to the deployment video how this is work so first we will uh, deploy the model this is the and when we have a model the model, we will uh, select the number of stock so we have the stock which shows the le less error now we will again do the same see the uh, top 5 stocks with less error these are the names of that error. next slide uh, now i would like to conclude that we have successfully uh, kuala lumpur stock exchange uh, Mal from malaysia stock exchange index and we have tried a variety of auto encoders and uh, we have also tried different values for hyperparameters and we have successfully tracked this index uh, we can also use this uh, for we can also try other variant also like lstm or a uh, lstm or gans also so basically what we have done in our uh, model is first we uh, 
all the data uh, using Pina readers from Yahoo Finance. Then we process that data and store our uh, system. Then we load that file uh, that which is stored in the form of pickle. Then we pre-process it. Uh, then we uh, normalize it and split it in a train and test. Then we created our auto encoders and train it. Then we train the model using the training data. And we find the error for both training and testing. Then we created a uh, in portfolio with subset of the stocks which are present in the KLSE index. And we track those uh, the working of both the index. And we have successfully able to do that. Now I will take you to the future scope. Now what we can do in future is right now we have tracked only for Malaysia. But uh, as some of uh, there are other indexes also like Nasdaq, Nifty 50, Sensex. We can also try these on that also. In future, we can uh, use more data uh, for this. And in future, we can also try for different variants of auto encoders and different uh, hyperparameters also uh, to train our model. So in this way, we can uh, uh, create uh, a, a good act more accurate auto encoder so uh, if you have any question there is a chat box in which you can type your question and we are here to answer you thank you all